In this example, I'm going to show how Tintree's Sync VM enables development teams to utilize copy data fast and efficiently. This means your development teams can each have their own unique environment without worrying about data becoming stale. Customize and configure the development environments, but rest assured that data refreshes will only take minutes. This is just one example of how Sync VM can enable efficient copy data management. There are many other opportunities to utilize this capability for varying situations. And so we are going to utilize an application, Sugar CRM, as a demo environment to show production data migrating into a development environment, actually two development environments. So we can see here, this is example production data in this application. In the two development environments, we can see Sugar CRM sync dev1 have no data in either environment. And so we are looking to move all of this production data into the two development environments. But we also want to enable the capability to send ad hoc requests to get updated data pushed in also. And so for this example, we are going to add a contact into the database. Here we are adding a gentleman named Kevin Anderson. Now that we have saved his contact info into the database, we want to verify that it is now shown here. We can see in the dashboard that Kevin Anderson is represented here and that he was added in at 12.35 p.m. In the development environment, we can continue to see that there is no new data added into this development environment, and we want to fix that. So we're going to run a simple Python script to synchronize data from the production environment into the two development VMs. Here, we've created a fresh snapshot of the production environment and are going to synchronize it into the two development VMs. Okay, at this point, we are going to clear our cache. And we will log into the first development environment. Here, we can see that Kevin Anderson is now part of this environment and that he has been moved over along with all of his other friends and all of the existing data that exists in the database. We can see that the time, 1235, matches exactly the same time, 1235 here. And then we can even go into the overall contacts and begin looking at what does it look like from the data perspective. Here we can see all the same contacts are listed, both on the production side and this development side. Development 2 also represents the same information, and we can see that they too have the same contacts listed. At this point, you may be wondering, okay, how is this done? Well, first, I'm going to show you how the production server is set up. The production server has been set up with four disks. At hard disk 1 is the operating system. Hard disk 2, 3, and 4 have the database, log files, and tempdb, respectively. We did not want to touch hard disk one as that would have copied over all of the production settings. We only wanted to copy over hard disks two, three, and four. So now we can look at how does Tintree view these disks. First, we can click on the virtual disks and see that for dev one, we have four SCSI disks. SCSI 00 also represents the operating system. We did not want to modify that. We only wanted to copy over 01, 02, and 03. We can see here that the provision size, 40 gigs, 250, represent the size of the disks, but the use size, and this is important, the use size only reflects the amount of data that is truly being utilized by this VM at this point in time. As you can see here, this is negligible 
at adding up to only 0.03 gigabytes in size for the disks we're concerned with, which are the database, log files, and tempdb. We were able to leave the operating system alone. The operating system has been customized with a specific IP address. It's been given a fully qualified domain name that has been attached to Active Directory. Specific applications have been installed for the development machine. None of that has been modified. The only piece that has been modified are the three data disks. These disks all relate back to the production VM, yet will be unique to this VM in terms of any new Delta data being recorded. And that Delta data will show up here in the used gigabytes. From a snapshot perspective, we can see a few things. We can see that a fresh data snapshot was taken. This fresh data snapshot was the one that was taken on the production VM. At that time, we also took two sync VM safety snapshots. This means that if we needed to go back to the point in time prior to the data synchronization occurring, we can. So in case we did not mean to synchronize data into one of the environments, we can easily roll back to the sync VM safety snapshot and get the developer back to the point in time that they were working at prior to any data being synchronized in. We can also see in the Tintree UI that there is a percentage counter here that will show us how far along the synchronization is at. Because we finished this so long ago, it has been staying at 100%. We can acknowledge this by clicking on the 100% and acknowledging it. At this point, we want to take everything back to the way it was. We want to wipe out Kevin Anderson from the production database. We want to wipe out all of this data from both dev environments. Let's get them back to clean. We are going to utilize another feature in SyncVM, which is our time travel capability to move between snapshots, either forward or backward, without rolling up any snapshots in that tree. And so we can go here and run this tin tree, revert back script, at this point, it is asking if we want to revert back the master VM. This means we can go back to a point in time snapshot prior to Kevin Anderson being added into the database. So we are going to say yes. It's also asking if we want to revert back the children VMs. Obviously we do. We want to take them back to the point in time prior to any data being put into them. And so we are also going to say yes. Now the production VM is being reverted back. Here, all of the VMs are being reverted back to their original state. They're being powered off and powered back on as the reversion process occurs. At this point, the script is finished running, everything has been reverted back, and we will now look at the application itself. We can see that Kevin Anderson is no longer in the database, and this has been brought back to the way it was prior to any changes being made. The same thing can be said for our two development environments. We'll log into those. We can see that the development environment has no data in it in Dev 1. And the same thing can be said for Dev 2. It was literally that simple. We were able to copy data from a production environment into the development environment and then also bring that development environment back over to the way it was prior to any new changes being made. I'm sure you can see now that Tintree's Sync VM capability allows you to quickly enable data refreshes and that each developer can now have their own development data set without incurring the high costs of duplicate data. And you also don't have to worry about that data getting stale.